I made this video as a Harry Potter character who got lost in Hogsmeade, took a wrong turn, and ended up in reality and had to move a car out the way. This is the first before clip. There was no one around when I did this first clip. And this is the second clip, just a simple clip of a car driving by. And I just combined the two clips together. The first step is File, New, Sequence. Hit OK. And now you have a wide format. And just drag the video clips from Lightroom into Premiere Pro and drop them onto the timeline. Next, stack the car layer on top of the layer of myself. Reduce the opacity of the car layer so I know where to match up the clips. That's what it looks like so far. I'm going to create my layer mask under opacity. And then I'm going to bring the opacity of the car layer back to normal and start creating my mask with the pen tool that we selected under opacity. And I'm not always going to have sharp dots. Sometimes I curve my dots around the tires. You just do that by hitting the option key over one of the dots and that'll curve the dot. This is the mask. So you can see the before and after of the mask that it erases the shadow under the car. But we're going to fix that in a little bit. I'm going to rotate the car by minus 2.5. And for every frame that I'm lifting the car up with position, I'm going to rotate the car a little bit so it looks like it's actually flying over my head with a little bit of an arch. For each frame, I'm going to perfect the mask as best I can because as the car is moving forward, you can't just move the mask for each frame and think it's gonna match up. The car gets bigger as it approaches, so you really have to adjust the mask for each frame. And you can see here in fast motion how I'm just adjusting the mask as I go frame by frame. You can see how I curve the dots on the tires so that they can fit in an arch around the tire as opposed to jagged little points from the mask. This is what the edit looks like so far and as you can see we desperately need to add a shadow under the car. So we're going to export what we have created so far in the sequence. We're going to export that to the desktop, this video so far. And then we're going to bring that video clip, drag it into a new sequence. And now all the layers are flattened and you could keep working. On a curved layer, I'm going to create a layer mask. And that's going to be for the shadow. And I'm going to adjust the size of the layer mask, how it would appear under the car. I'm going to darken that layer mask on the curves layer and then I'm going to feather the layer mask by a lot so that the edges don't look jagged, they look smooth. And as the car's approaching, I'm going to mask path this mask along with the car as it's moving and when I play it back, it'll be stuck to the car, the shadow. I'm going frame by frame to move the shadow, even stretching it out as the car approaches because as the car approaches, the car gets bigger. So as I'm going frame by frame, I also might rotate the shadow a little bit as the car begins to rotate. I might lengthen the width of the shadow so that it's larger and just adjust it how I need. And it looks, the edges look kind of jagged as it's passing over me, but I'm going to fix that in a second and feather the edges. Note how I position the car to go over me, but it also fluidly comes back down and keeps going. You can see I'm feathering the edges of the mask as it's passing over me and as it's passing over me it's becoming more feathered as it's passing over me. The next step is to go to file export media and I'm going to export what we have just done. So I'm constantly exporting my videos as to flatten the layers. The next step is to go to the effects panel on the bottom left of the program and choose lens flare and drop it onto the clip and as you can see it automatically you can see the effect. You can control the brightness of the lens flare. You can control where it's located by hitting the flare center and adjusting the numbers. I'm going to toggle a mask path on the flare center. And as I go frame by frame, I'm going to move the lens flare. And so that when I play it back, it fluidly is moving along with the wand. And you can see that's what it looks like so far. It only took like two minutes just to animate the lens flare to be moving along with the car. Next, which is one of my last steps of my editing process, I'm going to use curves to edit the colors and tones of the video. Curves is a tool that I've used in Photoshop for years. It's great for giving a cool artistic feel to your pictures or videos. Next, I'm going to choose a different frame size in the wide format. I'm choosing the Instagram frame size at 1080 by 1350. I'm going to choose a color mat 
that I'm going to drag underneath the layer so that there's white space around the video. And then I'm going to animate the video by positioning and scaling in and out, left and right. The last step is to bring on fake handheld motion presets to the video so it looks like the video is moving even though it was filmed on a tripod. My name is Mandy Rosen and I create videos on photography and video shop. I also just wrote a book which is now available on Amazon. It's 66 pages and is called The Modern Guide to Photography, Photoshop, and Video Shop and just covers all of these topics and teaches you all my secrets and I have three different options for the pricing. The Amazon book, a binder with a signed print and also the PDF of the book for only $10.99. I really enjoy making these tutorials. If you were to subscribe, like, comment, that would help me out a lot. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you guys are having a very productive weekend and stay cool.